everyone. Thank you for joining us for another issue of Texas Insider TV. I'm Jim Cardle. Is the world safer today than it was during 9-11 or is there some threats beyond the Middle East that we should be concerned about right here at home and on our own computers? We're going to be able to visit today with our own Congressman Michael McCall from the 10th Congressional District of Texas. Michael, thanks for coming in. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. You are chairman of the Homeland Security Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigation, a huge, huge responsibility. And last night I uh, had a number of Austinites over at the Headliners Club with former National Security Council Chairman Bobby Inman that many Texans know, and you covered a wide range of issues. Tell us in a, in a nutshell, what some of the things you're looking at and some of the comments that folks were interested in last night. Well, it. I think to answer your question, are we safer? I, I think the answer is yes in terms of we've killed bin Laden. Uh, Lockheed has been, uh, you know, the Yemen cleric who is um, orchestrating a lot of these chemical explosive attacks uh, against us overseas and in the United States was killed by a drone attack. Mm -hmm. um, but the area that I, I see uh, the, the emerging threat and the one that I think the top uh, military officials will tell you, the one that keeps them up at night, is the idea of a cyber warfare attack. Um, we know that in terms of espionage, uh, China has hacked into every federal agency, uh, including the Pentagon. So imagine if, like, you know, agents of a foreign power were caught with paper files stealing those out of the Pentagon, how, how much press that would get. And yet in the virtual world, uh, it's happening every day, and to, the, to the tune of, the size of the Library of Congress, that's, that's how much data uh, has been stolen. And, and uh, so it's, it's the military, it's all across, you know, the CIA it gets hacked into 100,000 times a day. Uh, House of Representatives, about a million times a month. And so <clears throat> as we look at the espionage issue, the theft of intellectual property, uh, the NSA Director General Alexander said it's, it's the largest transfer of, of wealth in history to the tune of $1 trillion of of intellectual property that's if you created. Put a dollar amount if you put a dollar amount of research and development, intellectual property created in the United States, stolen uh, primarily by Russia uh, and China. And then the final piece, the cyber warfare piece, is the one that really keeps everybody up at night. Uh, we know through projects that have been declassified, like Aurora, that you can bring down power grids with, with the click of a mouse, uh, blow them up. So the idea of a cyber attack to bring down energy sectors. Uh, power grids, uh, air traffic controllers, financial institutions to create economic chaos. These are all things that we're trying to guard against as we look at more hostile nations like Iran uh, getting more desperate to uh, attack the United States, as the DNI, uh, Mr. Clapper, uh, said recently. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's, it's one of those threats that we're trying to guard against. Well, you, you all mentioned that last night, in particular, the power grid scenario. Um, they can come in and reprogram computers. They can come in and go to your con your congressional or your government websites. But talk, if you would, just for a moment about the effect of how a power grid would be taken down, what that might do to folks that are watching today. Well, it could take uh, power uh, off the grid for months. It, it takes months to, to get these uh, power uh, generators uh, replaced. Um, and so I, I think it would, it would cause enormous damage. And so... You know, there's so many critical infrastructures out there that if you're tied to the internet, you're vulnerable uh, to an attack. And so what we're trying to do is harden those networks, both on, at the federal level and also in the private sector, uh, to make sure that they're not vulnerable to attack. And, you know, anybody getting an email, downloading to a link, can automatically all, all of a sudden uh, be linked to some malware, and, and all of a sudden your computer's in, infected. The power grid scenario is reprogramming. They, it's called reverse engineering, where they can... Uh, reprogram and then blow things up. That's how we, uh, you know, the Stuxnet at attack on the Iranian nuclear facility uh, brought down the centrifuges. A lot of folks haven't heard about that. So instead of flying airplanes into buildings, they're going in and destroying the machinery. That's correct. And, and, and it's, it's temporarily halted their nuclear uh, program, but I, I think they're still intent on, on uh, finalizing that. And there are other groups out there like uh, Anonymous, um, that uh, are really just kind of more anarchists on the internet that just want to, you know, <clears throat> create 
you know, chaos. And you all talked about that last night. I, I think a lot of folks will have read about or heard about Anonymous. I know uh, myself, I thought it was one person, but in fact it's a collaborative of hackers. Yeah. All going to work against Big Brother or whoever they perceive to be the enemy, correct? I, I think their goal, uh, some of them is to you know, embarrass and expose government, uh, which, you know, frankly, I'm not... Uh, Sometimes it's a good thing, right? Right. Uh, <clears throat> but but the other thing is to make a statement, like they crashed the CIA website, they crashed the FBI website, uh, they got into Stratford here in Austin mm -hmm. uh, and uh, infected subscribers, and you know Stratford, this big security firm, then it all of a sudden had a huge cyber attack on their hands that was quite embarrassing, mm -hmm. and so they kind of like to embarrass and they like to make statements. Okay, y'all mentioned last night and changing to a different subject if I can. Um, that there are different government agencies trying to get a handle on this, whether it be the Department of Homeland Security, Defense, if they all do it individually. How are we going to attack this problem? Is there anything you as a congressman are actively looking at implementing? Well, I think for the first time you're going to see uh, Congress actually <clears throat> pass legislation to deal with this issue. Uh, out of the Intelligence Committee, uh, came a, a bill that was based on the Defense Industrial Base Pilot Program where NSA can share signature threats, they called it, with the uh, internet service providers, with the private sector to, to, so they can greater protect themselves and share information in a confidential way. Uh, Homeland Security, we created a national information sharing organization uh, that's based on a, a cooperative uh, arrangement with the private sector. Uh, none of this is mandatory, but cooperative where the private sector can come to the Department of Homeland Security and, and share information to better protect itself. Because that's got to be part of the problem, if I may. You don't know you're a target until you've been hit, that's usually, right. so you don't prepare. You've got to, or somebody's got to be going through the process to get people to open up some of their sensitive information and collaborate with others to protect right. the group. And most you know, private sector companies don't want to uh, relay any vulnerabilities mm -hmm. because they have a duty to their stockholders. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if they can share it in a confidential way, and, and then the NSA or, or Department of Homeland Security can then uh, assist them and also identify signature threats that they can um, share with the private sector so they can patch, you know, put a patch to protect them. Okay, Congressman, we're visiting with Congressman Michael McCall from the 10th Congressional District here in Austin, and Chairman of the Homeland Security's Investigation and Oversight Committee. Congressman, one final question for you because uh, of the little bit of focus that's been on the actual internet infrastructure and uh, you mentioned the other day that the Strait of Hormuz I believe over by Yemen is about the shallowest spot but there's concern about the Middle East and the Iranian question possibly of having nuclear capabilities and whether Israel will need to react prior to the November election. Give us your thoughts on there on that, if you would. Well, that's a lot of different issues. There, there, there is a cable, internet cable. It's not in. A lot of people think it's in the ether. It's actually right. A physical cable that goes around the world, and the most shallow point is is off the coast of Yemen. Um, so the idea of it being subject to a physical attack is a real possibility that we're guarding against. Um, tensions between Israel and Iran mm -hmm. uh, are probably at the greatest they've been. Uh, we are seeing Iran get more brazen and desperate, as we saw the plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador, the Iranian of folks operative don't know in that. Mexico, uh, meeting with what he thought were the Los Zetas cartel members to take out the Saudi ambassador in, in Washington, D.C. We also uncovered a cyber plot where the Iranian ambassador was meeting with uh, Venezuelan diplomats in Mexico to train students uh, for a cyber attack against you know the White House and. Um, you know, uh, a lot of top governmental uh, institutions. Uh, so I think I think the tension is rising, um, but we have to be careful how we deal with that. And I think mm -hmm. that there, you know, Hezbollah is very. There's a heavy presence. I'll be talking at the Baker Institute at Rice tonight about the presence of Hezbollah in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, and the idea right now they they're traditionally more support financing roles of these cells, but they can become operational uh, if. Uh, say, for instance, Iran was uh, struck. Um, so we got to be very careful how we handle it. So as far as, as you can tell, the the possibility of Israel needing to react before the next 18 months, say, or before the election is escalating and to be determined. And, that, and that's the, pro the problem is Iran is getting very close to having a nuclear uh, capability, which 
uh, would be a disaster in the Middle East. Uh, Israel does not want that to happen. I don't see this president taking any action before the election. Mm -hmm. And I think Israel knows that. So they're sort of hanging out there. And so Israel is going to have to make the decision, are they going to strike on their own, which will be seen as a proxy of the United States. Right. And I, if that happens, uh, certainly they could probably take out their nuclear facility, but there will be uh, obviously repercussions to that. Well, Congressman, we're going to have you back to talk more about that in the future. Appreciate you coming in and respect for your time. We'll leave it there. Well, Lots going on in the Middle East and in cybersecurity. Be sure and tune back in for another edition of Texas Insider TV. Congressman Michael McCall, thanks a bunch for joining us thanks today. Jack. Appreciate it. Remember, thanks. folks, you're either an insider or you're not. I'm Jim Cardle.